Hello, my name is Jeremy Boroff, and today we're going to talk about the pulmonary section of the NCCPA blueprint for the pans and pannery. The first thing I want to talk about under the pulmonary system is infectious disorders. Um, and the first item under infectious disorders is acute bronchitis. Acute bronchitis is uh, generally viewed as a self limiting condition due to an upper airway infection. Uh, patients usually have a reductive cough lasting more than five days but less than three weeks. Um, chronic bronchitis is a productive cough that uh, it's a little bit different than acute bronchitis in that it lasts for most of the days of the month for three consecutive months for two consecutive years. or the, I'm sorry, in each of the two successive years. Um, acute bronchitis is referred to as, uh, as, as generally caused by a virus. Other causes of acute bronchitis are influenza A and B, uh, coronavirus, or, um, rhinovirus, RSV, and any human uh, meta pneumonia, pneumovirus. It's been suggested that bacterial pathogens such as pneumonia, or that cause pneumonia such as strep pneumonia, Haemophilus influenza, Staph aureus, uh, M. cateralis can cause bronchitis, but there's no studies to prove this. Other organisms that are really uh, the cause of bronchitis include uh, mycoplasma pneumonia, uh, Bordella pertussis, uh, chlamydiophilia pneumonia. Symptoms of uh, productive cough, or symptoms of bronchitis are, uh, include bron uh, uh, productive cough, wheezing, and maybe have an associated fever. Treatment is directed at symptom control. Um, uh, albuterol for wheezing and prednisone as needed for adjunct. Indications for hospital admission include a chest X-ray, uh, or sorry, indication for a chest X-ray include a heart rate greater than 100, respiratory rate greater than 24, Temperature greater than 38 degrees uh, Celsius or oxygen saturation less than 94% in on remere and healthy adults. Bronchiolitis, uh, acute bronchiolitis, uh, is defined as a syndrome that occurs less than children two years of age, presents with rhinorrhea and lower respiratory infection, in which inflammation results in wheezing and or crackles. Acute bronchiolitis uh, is caused by viral pathogens, on occasion, may be caused by mycoplasma pneumonia. Risk factors for developing severe disease uh, with bronchiolitis include prematurity, uh, age less than 12 weeks, uh, chronic pulmonary disease, congenital and anatomic defects of the airway, congenital heart disease, immunodeficiency, and neurologic disease. Indications for hospitalization and acute bronchiolitis include signs and symptoms of nasal flaring, retractions, grunting, respiratory rate greater than 70, dyspnea, cyanosis, toxic appearance, poor lethargy, I'm sorry, poor feeding, lethargy, apnea, uh, hypoxemia, and parents that are unable to care for the child at home. <coughs> Management uh, includes uh, hydration, oxygenation, uh, bronchodilator, bronchodilator therapy, such as albuterol, uh, and or zopinac, or I'm sorry, albuterol, or zopinac, um, uh, glucocorticoids uh, are indicated if there's wheezing, nasal suction is helpful. Uh, as a rule of thumb, antibiotics are generally indicated in, in uh, the treatment of acute bronchiolitis because it has a viral etiology. Um, a, a, acute epiglottitis um, is, uh, is the next topic I want to talk about. It's a curious uh, etiology or a curious, uh, some curious pathology. It's inflammation of the epiglottis and, and the adjacent subglottic structures. Uh, in, infection of the epiglottis is. Infectious epiglottitis is a cellulitis epiglottis and adjacent structures. It results from an invasion uh, or from bacteremia. Once the infection uh, begins, uh, swelling uh, rapidly progresses and involves the entire supraglottic larynx, and swelling is halted by tightly bound epithelium at the level of the vocal cords. Air, air obstruct, airway obstruction can result in, uh, in cardiopulmonary arrest. Epiglottitis is caused by bacteria. Uh, it can also be caused by viral and fungal etiologies. The most common pathogen of epiglottitis is Haemophilus influenza type B. Uh, uh, we really have seen a dramatic decrease in this from uh, because of the HIP, the HIP vaccine. Uh, in immunized, um, immunocompromised patients, Candida or Pseudomonas can cause epiglottitis. Other non-infectious etiologies include thermal injury, um, foreign body ingestion, or caustic injection. Clinical symptoms include respiratory distress, signs of epiphery reconstruction, strider, setting uh, in the tripod or stiffing position and or drooling. 
uh, fever, severe sore throat, odontophagia, and drilling are common. Chest x-ray or soft tissue neck may reveal a thumbprint stain. Labs should include, uh, or should be deferred until uh, airway secured. Uh, labs should include a CBC and a blood culture. The main stage of a treatment with epiglottitis includes securing the airway and instituting antibiotics. Recommended empiric treatment includes uh, third generation encephalosporins and clindamycin or vancomycin. The next thing I want to talk about is croup. Now, croup is very different than than uh, um, epiglottitis. Epiglottitis is a bacterial pathogen. Croup is a viral path, usually caused by a virus. Um, croup is also known as laryngotracheal bronchitis. Uh, croup presents with an inspiratory strider, bark, and a hoarse voice. Uh, you you do not see strider with, or I'm sorry, you do not see drilling with this. Most common ages afflicted uh, are between the ages of six months of age and three years of age. The most common offending organism is a parainfluenza virus. Typically presents acutely rather than a slow onset. The main stage of treatment uh, for croup are glucocorticoids and racemic epinephrine. Uh, the Restly croup score determines the treatment and is based upon the physical exam. In terms of the boards, I would not necessarily memorize the, the Restly croup score. I would just um, I would just be aware of you know that that's the, essentially the croup score that. Uh, clinicians use to help determine the treatment. Severe croup can progress to respiratory failure when there's fatigue, listlessness, marked retractions, decreased breath sounds, decreased LOC, cyanosis, pallor, tachycardia, disproportionate to fever. Rarely, there's these patients need a, need mechanical ventilation. A capillary blood gas should be uh, obtained if these signs were to occur. Mild croup can be treated at home. Cool mist can help provide symptomatic relief. Uh, always keep in mind, children have a tendency to get worse at night. If the child looks bad uh, and we need admission, consider uh, admission, especially at night or even evening hours. Indications for uh, admission for croup include a need for racemic epinephrine treatment continuously, a uh, need for oxygen, moderate retractions, degree of response to initial therapy. If they look uh, toxic or they have poor nutritional intake, if the child is less than six months, a return visit in 24 hours, uh, or poor uh, parental care at home. Croup itself usually resolves within three to seven days. <coughs> the next topic I want to talk about is influenza. Now, influenza is a key respiratory illness. It's caused by usually influenza A and B viruses. Uh, transmission of the virus is in respiratory secretions. Generally speaking, viral shedding is detected 24 to 40 hours before the onset of symptoms, but uh, much lower during the symptomatic period of the illness. Um, so you actually are more most effective before you get symptoms. Uncomplicated influenza presents with fever, headache, myalgias, nasal congestion, non-productive cough, and a sore throat. Uh, physical exam is usually unremarkable. Uh, pneumonia is the most common uh, symptom of, of influenza. Myositis and rhabdomyolysis are, are complications of influenza. Uh, CNS complications of uh, influenza include encephalopathy, encephalitis, transverse myelitis, asymptomatic gyitis, and Guillain-Barre syndrome, which uh, tend to be rare. There's two classes of antiviral drugs uh, that are available for uh, treatment of influenza, um, and they include neuroaminase inhibitors such as uh, xenomere, osteomere, against influenza A and B, or the uh, amantadine such as... Uh, uh, amantadine or uh, remantadine, which are active against influenza A only. These agents should be uh, should shorten, or these agents can shorten the duration of illness up to uh, anywhere from twelve hours to three days. Most studies show benefit when instituted within a forty eight to twenty four to forty eight hours from the onset of symptoms. Institution of antivirals are, is recommended when the illness is required hospitalization. Age over 65, women uh, are pregnant women or postpartum women less than two weeks. Progressive, severe, complicated illness, high priority age groups uh, for influenza vaccine, uh, pregnancy, immunocompromised patients, healthcare workers, and household contacts.